ushers, junior ushers, or for being on the floor today on this third Sunday. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. But you have to be trying. Because God has already had a lot of 
imperfections and taking care of our imperfections. That non righteous, Romans 3 10 said, No, not one. Romans 3 23 said, We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So just because David may mess up something, that doesn't mean he is messed up with God. Doesn't mean he's not a Christian. Luke chapter 22, verse 89, Jesus said, and, and the text said that he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare for us the Passover that we may eat. And they said to him, Where will thou that we prepare? Given this text, I'm going to use for thought this morning, is planned and it's prepared. When you turn to your neighbor and, and grab it by the hand, because I want church folks to get comfortable church folks and say, neighbor, neighbor. whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, and whether you can see it or not, whether you can see it or not, God has planned for you. God has planned for you. And God has prepared for you. God has prepared for you. Whatever it is in your life, whatever it is in your life, God has planned for you. Think about the 
more. That means you don't have to worry about it no more. Amen. For, and he that has the keys of death and hell in his hand. God has planned for everything. God has prepared. There's nothing that can get God short. There's nothing that surprises God. There's nothing that sneaks up on God. There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too complex yep, yep. and too serious that God had not planned for. And by the way, oh, I didn't put this in my notes, but he said, I, by the way, I got a good plan. Amen. Amen. Not only do I have a plan, it ain't like your plan. You know, most mornings, I do very little of what I plan to do. All the other day, I was studying for this Sunday, and I got a call and said, somebody in the hospital, I had to change my plan. Right, right. And then when I got down to the hospital, I found that there was somebody else in the hospital. I had to change my plan. And then I had to leave that hospital and go to another hospital. I had to change my plan. And then every now and then, my wife would call me and need some help with her situation. I had to change my plan. But God said, I have a good plan and a prepared plan and a plan that is a good plan. For we know, Romans 8, 28 said, and we know all things work together for good. Right. To them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to His purpose. So I'm not going to walk around claiming the bad plans and mistaken plans and wrong plans. Everything that happened in my life happened according to the plan that God had planned for my life. Happened according to the purpose that God had prepared for my life. Even things that didn't look good and feel good and taste good and act good. God had a good plan to shape me and mold me and make me and correct me and bring me into the fulfillment of his plan for my life. I was in Boston planning one thing and God planned another. I moved to California planning one thing and God planned another. And let me tell you, I had no plan to come back to Alabama. But God changed my plan because he had a good plan for my life. I had to go through some things and deal with some things and put up with some things and experience some things but all was a part of the plan that God had for my life. And he had a good plan. It is a God plan. It is a plan that's unfolding every day in our lives. And, and, and God wants us not to be bothered by things because things can't change God's plan. Folk can't change. Now, I don't care what folk plan to do to you I thought plan to say about you. I thought plan to treat you. I thought plan to work with you or not work with you. Get along with you or not get along with you. That doesn't change. Your husband can't change God's plan. Your wife can't change God's plan. Your money can't change. Because God's plan is not based on what he doesn't have. God's plan is based on what he has everything. The earth is the law of the fullness of the world. And all they that dwell. You see, when we get bothered about things, we worry about things. Take our mind off God's plan. It keeps us from being involved in God's plan. The reason God wants us bothered, the reason Satan wants us bothered, the reason he wants us aggravated, the reason he wants us frustrated, the reason he wants us irritated, the reason he wants us frightened and fearful, so he can take our minds off God's plan and keep us from following and doing the plan that God has prepared for us. The reason you're going through stuff is stuff that's trying to take you away from the plan that God has for you. God has planned for you to experience peace. That's his plan. Did he say, my peace I leave with you? That's my plan. God has planned for you to experience joy. Did he not say, my, I did think I was supposed to you that my joy might remain. He didn't want the joy to come and go. That my joy might remain in you, that your joy. That, that's God's plan. And, and so when I begin to experience fear and, and doubt and frustration and anger and irritation, I need to know that somehow I am gotten distracted, I've gotten deceived, and I've gotten discouraged from following It's not God's plan that we be worried about anything. Then Paul said, Philippians 4, 6, I'm keep saying, you get it? Be careful of nothing. You then his plan for be worried about nothing. No thing. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Is that right? Then Jesus said, y'all not be over concerned about it. About things, don't let things distract you. Don't let things disturb you. Don't let things make you despondent. Don't let things 
get upset and take away from God's plan because Jesus said, take no thought of your life. Matthew 6, 25, what you shall eat and what you shall drink and what you shall wear. Because I got a plan. Jesus said, folk who aren't saved worry about stuff like that. See, we all have a different testimony. Amen. Jesus said in, in Matthew 6, 32, I believe it's 6, 31, he said, listen, he said, for all these things do the Gentiles seek, all these things that work for, all the things that bother for, all these things that aggravate for, all these things that fight for, he said, these things do the Gentiles seek. For your Father, which is in heaven, knows that you have need of what? All these, that no thing that God is in the of, he said, all these things, those little things, those big things, those money things, those job things, those health things, those marriage things, those children things, all these things, he knows what you have. He knows you have need of all, all these things. We have to stop worrying so much. To worry is sin. Because worry is disobedience to God. If I was not committing adultery, every other time he talked about me. But I can wear all the day long to be feeling sorry for me. Worry is disobedience too. Because Jesus tells him not to worry. Paul said in Romans 14, he said, Who's up and down with his damn? What's this? Without faith is sin. So I need to understand that when I worry, I'm saying that I don't have any confidence in God's plan. I'm saying I doubt God's plan is well enough and prepared well enough to provide for me. I doubt that God's plan is well enough and prepared well enough to take care of me. Because I didn't, I'm worried about the plan. I'm worried about the, the fulfillment of the plan for my life. And if God has a plan and if God's prepared, then why are we worried? God said, I got a plan for grass. In the same Matthew 6, I got a plan for grass. Now, my only plan for grass is to get it cut. As cheap as I can. As well as I can. As often as I can. And pay as little as I can. That's my plan. Now, sometimes that plan don't work, because sometimes. Sadly, give me the pass of this guy who's still in cheap. <laughs> Bible stop saying go stop coming back grass. You don't cheat back. I'm giving you the cheat back and go. You won't walk it. <laughs> and, and so just because my plan doesn't align with God's plan, I just want to be satisfied and thankful that God has a plan. And He didn't leave to me to figure out the plan. Then He said in Hebrews 13 5, Don't be worried about stuff you ain't got. Let your conversation be about covetousness. And be content with such things you have because I'm, I got a plan. I'll never leave you nor forsake me. And so when I'm fearful and doubtful, I, I give God a bad testimony. My children see me worried and say, what kind of God he got? My children see me angry and say, what kind of God he got? My children see me not worshiping and not praising and not singing and not giving thanks. And they wonder what kind of God. See, I knew God had a good plan. God saw his plan unfold. In my parents' life, before I even knew he had a plan for my life, I saw his plan unfold in their life. It wasn't an easy plan for me. It was a hard plan, a difficult plan. It was a challenging plan. It was a plan that was knees, that was a plan that was a hurt, that was a plan that was a pain, that was a plan. But God had a good plan. And can I just tell you this? You need to stop worrying about trying to, trying to give your life and not experience anything. Just because you go full stuff. Doesn't mean that God didn't have a good plan. And doesn't mean the plan is not working. See, second Corinthians 7, 4, 7, 4, 17, Paul says, This life is fiction. Mm -hmm. It's but for a moment. Right. When God has a plan, it works for me and it achieves and it shows exceeding wish in glory. See, the more stuff I put over here, the, the more glory comes over there. You know what I'm saying? The more complaints that I put over here. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Of am angry. Because that's another thing. Get a little bit more work. Go ahead and throw your doubt. I got a little bit more glory. That's the way. You see, I'm not going to let you distract me from the gospel. Because you're going to Go ahead and. Uh, every, every time I'm going to break, I got a little bit more glory. Every time I'm going to I got a little bit more glory. That ain't 25, y'all. I'm going to be covered in that. 
white affliction. It ain't that heavy. It's but for a moment. It don't last that long. It working for us and exceeding more eternal weight in glory. The more you put up it over here, the more glory you're going to get over there. Amen. Some of y'all trying to get the glory without going through nothing. Oh, folks, you know what? No cross. No crime. So God has a plan to keep us burned. God has a plan to keep us from being bothered. God has a plan to keep us from being aggravated, frustrated. I, I just don't. Listen, it, it's amazing. Listen, I'm human, and I, and I do get angry, and I do get frustrated, but I am amazed at how much he is teaching me to become less frustrated and less bothered and less irritated and less concerned. That There were things that, that used to happen that I, I would just jump right on, but now I learned to wait on God. Because he's prepared for the things that I'm going to go try to fix. He's prepared for the things I'm trying to correct. He's prepared for the things I'm trying to change. I just wait a moment. My, my girls even say sometimes that you, you, you're so much calmer now. I can understand that all the times that I was playing, and even though I was making some things work, I wasn't waiting on God's plan. And I was having to use my strength and my ability. That's why I was weak and weary and warm and aggravated and irritated and frustrated because I was trying to make things happen. But once I learned that he's already made things happen, he's already made things happen. I just don't know what he's made happen. I may not know how he's made happen. My eyes don't have to see, my ears don't have to hear, my heart doesn't have to feel. But he had to pass some things for me. And for everybody that do what? That love him. And I may be going through a piece of the plan right now that I don't enjoy. But he has a plan. He's already prepared to get me through that. To get me past that. So we've got to start worrying about, well, not we prepare well enough. And prepare by coming to God. Prepare by listening to God. Prepare by learning for God. Prepare by walking with God. Amen. Prepare by doing the things of God. I didn't know that, that, that the way I can make sure that my children were part of God's plan was not to worry about my children, but to live right before God. If he says, they said in Psalm 27, 23, or 25, I have been young and I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the seed. I can just plan to live right. If I can plan to serve right. If I can plan to give right. If I can plan to live right. If I can plan to care right. If I can plan to share right. God has taken care of all the... In fact, in Matthew 16, 6, verse 3, said, But first, but seek ye first. The, the king of God and his righteousness, his righteousness in words, his righteousness in living, his righteousness in relationship, his righteousness in service. All these things that you're worried about, all these things you're frustrated about, all these things you're aggravated about, all these things that you're upset about, I will add to those things. I didn't know that. And so today, I'm closing now. Because God is just trying to speak to us simply and clearly that he has planned and prepared for everything. And he wants us to be focused on him and not on Don't let things keep us from worshiping God. Don't let the thing keep, that you require will keep you from singing. He's prepared for that thing. Don't let the thing that you're living with keep you from obeying Christ. Because he has a plan for that thing you're living with. Don't let that thing that you don't have distract you and take you away from your service to God. Because he has a plan for that thing. He has prepared for that thing. So now text this morning, Jesus takes a very simple this. Jesus began to go back to heaven. Luke 22 he wanted to sit down and have a meal with his disciples. He knew that he was going to leave them in charge 
of his father's business. And he knew that they were not prepared to be about their father's business. And he wanted to teach them in this lesson. The boys, you don't have to worry about fishing. I prepared for everything. And you don't have to worry about the jobs you're going to get. I have planned for everything. And you don't have to worry about the opposition you're going to experience and misunderstanding that you will encounter in life. I have planned and prepared for everything. So in our text, he takes a very simple instrument and teach them a very important message that he has prepared for everything. You see, I love Jesus because if you look at the first uh, six verses of this chapter, Jesus didn't let what folk thought about him and said about him and tried to do to him, keep him from planning for his disciples. You see, in that first part of the text, there are folk who were trying to kill him. There are folk who were trying to stop him. There are folk who were trying to block him. The chief priests and the scribes, they saw how they may kill him. But it didn't take his mind of the plan that God had given him to do. He wasn't distracted from his plan, and he wasn't discouraged from his plan, and he didn't let folk divide him and keep him from moving to the plan that God had for him. And church folk, too easily, we let folk get us off the plan that God has prepared. We too easily we let folk discourage us and distract us and keep us off the plan that God has prepared. So in that 20... Second chapter. Even though the chief priests and the scribes saw how they may kill Jesus, his mind was on the plan. And his mind was on preparing others for the plan. What our children need more than anything, not Nintendo and the PS4 and Twitter and Facebook and whatever. I ain't got no children, but I ain't got when I had children, they didn't have all that. Because I had a plan for them. It wasn't wasting my time, my money on stuff. It was getting to the point that they could take care of themselves and buy their own stuff. That was my plan. And it worked! By the grace of God. I love my mother and my father because they had a plan. They made it clear to me their plan was not, they were not going to cuddle me. That wasn't their plan. Their plan, they wouldn't always say yes to me. That was not their plan. And their plan was when I walked across that stage, I would take care of myself. That was their plan. And they didn't have my feel my opinion about their plan. I didn't get a chance to vote. That was their plan. You need to talk to God. I have no opinion. I have no advice. So whatever it is that God has planned for you, she shot me. The male clan offered her a job. And she turned them down. I'm like, turn down the male clan. That would have been my plan. I didn't question it. I didn't criticize it. I didn't tell them, I don't know enough to know what's best for them. But I know God does. And if he got him through med school, if he got him through law school, if he got him through job, can he get him through the next level? Well, I got the good plan. I'm just planning to try to make my money longer last than I live. So I'm going to borrow the, the license and the license. But wait, I hope my plan works. I'll be caught if it don't work. <laughs> He wanted these boys to know that he had planned and prepared for everything. And he had planned and prepared for something simple as a little something. Don't you think they ought to get the rest of this plan? If there's something right now in your life that you're just not sure about, talk to God and say, God, I know you got a plan. And I know you got a good plan. Let me stop worrying about my plan. Let me be satisfied as you unfold your plan for me and my family. I want to command these disciples. Because when Jesus said, go do something, and they didn't know what to do, and how to do it, and where to do it, they didn't question you. They didn't talk about how little time, resources, how far the city was. <laughs> they 
They said, where do you want us to prepare? Sometimes we got to stop trying to understand everything that God is saying. It, it'll make my church look to understand everything. But pastor has to think about that. You don't think about it if somebody calls you going to work. You get them to go. But when it's time to work for God, I have to think about it. That's what God said. This, the same God that gave you a job to go into the argument is the same job that gave you a job in the mission of this church. These boys, when God says, go, get the number one thing we all must do. They made themselves better. That's all they did. And they made themselves better. Then that's the question. What said the Lord? How far, Lord? What, what house, Lord? What, what we're going to get the, what we're the, uh, the ox of the lamb from? They just came to him and said, where do you want us to go? And, and I love the fact that God did a couple of things that was ironic or, or that were different than the way we would normally do. But another one, he, yeah, he wanted to go. He didn't get James and John. He didn't get John's brother. He didn't call him a watch. He said, Milton and Calvin and Willie and Sammy and, and, and uh, James. He got some of the right boys. He got, he got Peter and John. Peter and John didn't get along all the time. He didn't say, Jamie, John, you know Jamie. Jamie. With John's brother, right? Who was Peter's brother? Andrew. Then he talked. You remember when, when, when the Lord said, Andrew, go get your brother Peter? But when he got up and put him to work, he took two fellows that you and I would have put together. I, I would have made him to <laughs> He took. Peter and John. Peter had a brother named Andrew who was a disciple. Jesus had to do about what Andrew was. <laughs> Jane, John had a brother named Jane who was a disciple. Sometimes we got to do what God said to do when we're doing it for what we didn't want to do it with. Because you're doing it for him. And you won't experience what he's planned for you, but perhaps if you don't do what he said to do. Like he says, we miss too many blessings. Not doing what he says to us. Like he says to us. He took two, then he took an unusual situation. He said, Well, go to the city. And when you get to the city, that you'll find a man meet you bearing more. What was the problem with that? Men didn't bear water in Bible days. Who cared for water? Who did Jesus meet the well? There was a woman in the Bible days. <laughs> gave me water. Jesus gave me water. See, y'all saying something for saying. And it wasn't not in the well. <laughs> but there was a woman in the Samaria. Now, if you say your mind, sir, don't understand the irony and the message that Jesus said. He said, you're going to find a man doing something unusual. You're going to find a man doing something that men don't know to do. You're going to find people that folks don't think you're going to use. Because they are strange. They are unusual. Listen, I've gotten used to being strange. I love being strange. I wonder what you right now that I just said. I'm glad I'm crazy. Oh, come again. Boy, you're crazy. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> How you know? <laughs> My poor little son, he can't help me. He said, Dad, your DNA is taken over. He said, I was somewhere one day. This lady said the same thing to me that somebody said to you, and they never met you. <laughs>
problem with many of us is we are too traditionalist. We want to do what we saw done even when we don't stay home done. Yeah. We're afraid to break out. Yeah. If I were to tell the mothers, who don't sell here, y'all have sin. They put me in the corner. Why? I don't know. It's always up in the corner. <laughs> if I were to say, Dickens, I want y'all move here. Oh, here I'm moving to Dickens. Took out the Dickens corner. You better hope you never build a church without me and tell my animals they have to get in the corner. <laughs> Run till that. <laughs> I took out the last church out there. Don't even know why there. But you have a fit if we break the tradition. If we do something strange, go help somebody. It's strange to have an angel program. We never had one. It's strange to collect food and take basketball. We never did it. That's strange. It's strange to have a benevolent program to pay mortgages and rent and utilities. I know big churches. Don't do that. Sometimes you got to do something unusual and different. Right. On your way to church, sometimes you stop and visit the sick. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. The folk are talking about you. She is doing that kind of pastor say, She never did that before. Well, it's about time. Jesus gave him something we used to do. A man carrying one. Those boys had been looking for a woman to carry one. They were missing. And then the verse 13 says, and they went, see, they responded. They went. I, I sent some of y'all a text this week or eight mail saying, are you going to do anything for Christ in this church this year? Don't raise your hand. I'm not meddling. I just want to do items and say, do you want an opportunity to go? Do you want an opportunity to find? They went. And they found. Is that right? You know what verse 13 says? As he has said, they found what God had planned. They found what Christ had prepared. I'm trying to find what Christ has prepared for them. I'm trying to find what he has planned. And you know what the best place to find it? You're right where you are. You see, I gave all the notes of the bowl this morning. Because I was, I'm going to teach a lesson through this bowl. Mother's got your roses over there, hold them up. I do a lot of short tail because, see, I was small in school and my teacher had to do a lot of short tail with me. You know how it goes, Blue? If you're a fan,
are your plans right now? How are your plans going? Yo, man, you got some plans for the future, but keep Christ in the future. Because he'll help make your plan real. He'll make your plan better than you thought it was. He'll do more than you ever thought that he would plan to do. Ephesians 3 20 says, Now to him that is able to do more than we could think or imagine, according to the power of in us. That's his point. I've told you before how he did so many other things more than I imagined. Gave me more experience than I thought I'd ever have. Show his love. I thought I'd never experience. Gave me more patience. Now he loved it. Gave me more forgiveness. That was his plan all the time. What's your plan? When you leave for the day, what's your plan? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What's your plan? What are you preparing? What are you preparing, child? What's your plan? If we can go day after day, we have to look and never have any plans for God. Never have any plans with God. How can we be the part of the plan that God has for us? What's your plan? What's your plan? Not only for the future, what's your plan for eternity? I don't know what the future holds, but I know it holds the future. I don't like this song, because the language that I need to run on ain't going to be. I know what ain't going to be. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, tell me what the end going to be. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall lie, with your life remain. We shall not prevent them, we shall sleep, but we shall be caught up with them in the power of the man, to meet the Lord, so shall we ever be. Lord, 18, and we're going to comfort one another. That's the plan. We study Revelation on Wednesday night, it's really one of the God's plan. God has a plan. Chapter 2 and 3, here the message. Four through, chapter 4 through 22, he unveils his plan. And even though there may be some challenges and difficult things that happen, you know what John said in Revelation 22? Even so, come back to that. I know your plan. I know your plan. I'm going to write with his plan for my life. Don't sing no sad songs for me. I told my wife not to have a few, but she don't listen to me now. I know she's going to be dead. But she better hope I'm not, I'm not just swooning. I'll wake up and kill her. <laughs> I don't need no sad song. I don't need no what I did. I know what I did. The Lord knows what I did. The good and the bad and the ugly. And I did it for good, bad, and ugly folk. I'm all right with the plan he has for my life. Don't know how long the plan is going to last, but I'm going to write the plan. Because I'm trying to die every day so I can live. Trying to die to my attitude. Trying to die to my feelings and my emotions and my desires. I'm trying to die every day so I can live. Because if I don't die, I won't live. Corn won't grow to the seed of there. Corn don't come in the can, y'all. Chicken don't cover the package. Somebody got some beer. Brother Terry, sometimes hard work burying the seed and we just got the plow, got the water, got hold of the rain, get the weeds. And the price don't go down. <laughs> Terry go out and buy the contract, say he's gonna sell so much wheat then don't get no rain, he ain't got no wheat to sell. And people want their money back. <laughs> But they don't stop him playing, Brother Brother Terry. You got to, I've been afraid of saying I'm not afraid to say it. I say it all the time. I wear most of my faith. I did my successes. If you're not going to fail, go home at my wife. She did. I said her yesterday. 
I probably failed like all this other. No, that's all right. I've been failing for 43 years. Getting up, falling, getting up, falling, getting up, falling. I didn't fall down, but we didn't fall down. What's your plan? That one today. I'm coming to the Catholic baptism. If you want to be a part of God's plan, just have the courage to say, I want to be a part of God's plan. Will you come? God yourself. With the hymn that comes out to me, I will know why it's coming to the You're never too young to be a part of God's plan. I was nine years old when I joined church. 